Good morning and welcome to Grace Church Middle Way. We'll be celebrating morning prayer right two and it's proper 23, the 20th uh, Sunday in Pentecost. And we'll uh, hear the uh, processional hymn and then we'll start on page 79 of the prayer book.
Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let's say together the Vanity found on page 82, and we'll end with the Gloria. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 22, verses 1 through 15. And if you're watching at home, it's on page 610 of the prayer book. We'll say it by half verses and end with the refrain. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You are my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All of my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Be not far from me, O God. The first reading is from the book of Job. Job said, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. 
Would he contend with me in the greatness of all his power? No, but he would give, me, give heed to me. There an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there, or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16 is found on page 92, and we'll say that together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 19 is on page 94, and we'll say it together. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you alone are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
gospel lesson is from, from the gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake, who is uh, for the good of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of the Lord. Our sermon today was written by the Reverend Danae Ashley, who's an Episcopal priest and a marriage and family therapist, ministered with parishes in North Carolina, New York, Minnesota, and now serves as the Associate Rector at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Seattle. Peekaboo. Cover eyes with hands and then remove them as you say the words if you wish. Have you ever played this game with a baby or a toddler? Or perhaps you have heard this from a child. If I close my eyes, you can't see me. Developmentally, children are extremely concrete thinkers. That's why they have their hands, mouth, nose, feet, and basically their entire bodies into everything they can see, smell, touch, hear, and taste. They are learning about the world and what it means to be in it with all their senses. It is how we learn the world still, although we have more life experience and abstract thinking to help us out. However, when we encounter something that is new and unfamiliar, something we don't understand, the first thing we do if we are not fearful, even as adults, is we want to see, smell, touch, hear, and taste it in order to find out what it is. We want to make sense of our experience in the world, and our bodies are wired to do that. This happens with our experience of God, too. How about that Job passage today? In essence, he's been playing peekaboo with God. Today, also, my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy, despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. How many of us have been where Job is, asking, where are you, God? If I close my eyes, are you still there? If I open them, why can't I see you? We don't understand what God is doing or what God is up to, and so we try to figure it out with our human limitations. It's difficult to rely on the God of peekaboo. In our gospel today, a man asks Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That strikes as an interesting phrase. Is there anything that the man could do on his own to inherit eternal life? Jesus answers this question by reminding him that only God is good and of the commandments that pertain to community relationships. The man replies that he had kept all those commandments since his youth. Jesus didn't doubt his sincerity. He looked at him and loved him, and because he loved him, he tells him the truth, the one thing that he lacked, was full reliance on God. 
He needed to sell everything, give the money to the poor, and follow Jesus. Notice that Jesus didn't condemn the man for being wealthy. Jesus knew that wealth in itself was not bad, but it made things more difficult for a person who was wealthy to realize their full dependence on God. If you think about it, many times when we have ample amount of money and we feel things are going our way, we feel self-sufficient. After all, we've worked hard for a good life, haven't we? It's ours. But that attitude can block us from responding wholly to the gifts that God alone can give us, a full, whole life now and eternal life in the future. We're going to do a little godly play here and wonder together. Let's wonder what would happen if we looked at this story as a healing story. If you think back across Mark's gospel, any person who comes to Jesus kneeling, asking for a blessing, is either deathly ill or demon-possessed. And almost every time Jesus orders someone to go away afterward, it's in relation to healing. I wonder what would happen if we saw this man as Jesus saw him, heart sick. Maybe the, uh, the perfect life the man was trying to lead created a distorted sense of self, God, and neighbor. Let's wonder together. This is also the only story in the Gospels where a personal call of Jesus is rejected. The rich man walks away grieving because he wasn't able to give up the one thing that kept him from giving himself completely to God. But even though it's the only story in the Gospel where this happens, it's been repeated over and over again in the centuries to follow. Each of us has one thing, often more than one, that we refuse to let go of so that we can be more fully in relationship with God. It doesn't have to be money at all, although it can be. Our spiritual dysfunctions can take the form of other things, any idols that come between us and our loving God. We all have them. Becoming aware of them and having the courage to address them doesn't have to be overwhelming. As Jesus says, for mortals, it's impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. What would it take for each of us to give up what is blocking us from relying on God with our whole lives, the loving God in which we live and move and have our being? As Episcopalians, we especially emphasize the incarnation, the fact that Jesus came to dwell among us with human hands and feet, living in daily human life. That is an example of God doing something new, something radical. Jesus telling the wealthy man to give up what interferes with his full reliance on God is a continuation of that new work. It's a continued call for us to be radical, for us to rely on Job, Job's God, whom we perceive as a peekaboo God, as a radical call. That love is in, incarnational, it means that there is more life than emptiness. It means that there is richness in living in community with others, true community, where you can share and pray and serve with others. It is about living your best life, about becoming who your creator created you to be. But we can't do that if we allow things to hold us back from deeper relationship with God. We are called to total stewardship, body, mind, and soul. An article in Live Science entitled Why You Should Smile at Strangers discusses studies where people were asked to smile at other people as they walked down the street. Such a small, simple thing to do. Sociologists looked at a variety of contextual influences, but the two main sources of data were, number one, how the people who smiled at others felt afterwards, and number two, how the people who were smiled at felt. The results were positive. The smilers felt that their outlook improved markedly, and the people who were smiled at felt uplifted and were more willing to smile at others as they went through their day. It turned out to be a pay-it-forward attitude. Smiling at another is such a simple thing, a small change that the participants make in their daily lives. They become more aware and more in tune with their own behavior, just like we do as we make small steps in following Jesus. What is one small concrete step we can do to address an idol in our life that keeps us from glimpsing God? Perhaps we take the time to pray each day or join a ministry that addresses racism or poverty in our neighborhood. Maybe we finally call a therapist to make that first appointment or reach out to a neighbor who needs help. 
There are plenty of small steps we can take to draw closer to God and slowly chip away at what is blocking us. The question is, are we willing to stop playing peekaboo with God ourselves? By releasing ourselves from the bondage of our idols, we will be able to reach out like we did as children, to touch, taste, smell, hear, and see God around us and find that God has been steadfast and waiting for us all along. Amen. Please turn to page 96 and join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. We put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The call of the day. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In our prayers today, let's remember our folks on the prayer request list, Mag, Kaylee Rose, Lynn, Mary Ellen, Stanley, Haley, Leslie, Nancy, Mary, Sandy, Mark, Carolyn, Bianca, Linda, Raymond, Ann and Warren, Amon, Philip, Bill, Mark, Terry, Nancy and her family, Carrie Beth, Lonnie, Barbara, Brady, Diana, Elizabeth, Honey, Kim, Jimmy, Dennis, Carolyn, Robert and Margaret, Michael, Jason and his family, Tanya, Rennell, Craig, Judy, Peter, and we'll add Sam Rosetta and Kenny Fagans. Victims of natural disasters, our service members at home and abroad, Christians around the world. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Thomas of Beckett in Morgantown and the Reverend Deacon Al Pritchard. And our companion diocese in Columbia, the Reverend Antonio Del Calvo, Vicario Parroquia de la Trinidad. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law 
and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring their nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care in keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for making the earth fruitful so that it might produce what is needed for life. Bless those who work in the fields, give us seasonable weather, and grant that we may all share the fruits of the earth, rejoicing in your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in, their, in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peggy has recorded an offertory hymn, too, so I'm going to play that. Please join me in the general thanksgiving found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. 
We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.